Hey guys, how's it going? It's your boy AK. So, if you are only interested in the review, then uh, after the review, feel free to click away because this will be a two part video. Uh, one uh, first part of it uh, will be centered on the review, and the second part will be talking about why was the long break happening and just maybe a bit of rambling. So if you don't want to stick around for the second part, feel free to click away. I will let you know when the review is actually finished. And um, if you want to stick around for all of it, then that's perfectly fine as well. So let's get into this. I am finally, uh, um, I finally managed to bring myself to watch this uh, show season three I've already done season one season two before so make sure you check these out before you watch this one to get caught up a little bit more of course it's been a while so I don't remember everything from previous seasons I have to admit I have postponed uh, making this video for a very long time because I just kept finding better things to do with my time well that's how it is but anyways, let's proceed with uh, just few points that I decided that I would write and highlight specifically based on certain characters and so certain general things that are happening here. Mostly will be general stuff, I will try not to get into too much detail. So, with that said, uh, let's get into this. Um, so, first point um, is just plot armor. And uh, that being said means, uh, uh, for example, when Yas, uh, even though we know Yasmina is quite athletic character, she's very sporty, she's very uh, well trained physically, um, and uh, yet uh, there was a scene where she falls from the shaft, and that's pretty high to fall, to be honest, and uh, somehow she still lands like a ninja, like a cat on her paws, basically, without any major issues, and uh, that was an obvious, uh, well, p plot armor point right there, uh, because that's physically impossible, and um, the other one was with Brooklyn falling pretty hard as well, I think it was in a shaft of a lift or something like that, uh, or maybe it was another scene, I cannot recall but whatever it is that there was a definite scene if you watch the show you will definitely know what I'm talking about it's when she falls and then all of a sudden and she does get you know she does fall pretty hard and all of a sudden she just gets back up like uh, nothing happens basically so and then of course uh, the other thing that's important here as a general note to point out that because of how long they've been on this island which I think was a several months, maybe six months, maybe less, I'm not sure, but in any case, I think it's way longer than Eric Kirby, so they officially became, this whole crew is basically Eric Kirby on steroids at this point, just just thought I'd say that, because uh, it's, yeah, that, that's already setting something up that to me just looks just so ridiculous, and um, I just cannot really find this in any way believable, in any way, shape or form, I just can't do it. But anyway, th those are just very minor points uh, in terms of some plot armor things, and to some of you they might be big points, so let me know if that's the case for you uh, in the comments below. Uh, and uh, let's go into the characters individually, just very brief notes of the characters uh, one by one. So Yasmina's character, um, I mean, uh, very straightforward here, uh, just leave her as she is, in my opinion, she's pretty good as it is, I would remove the plot po armor points and uh, maybe just some other things that I felt like they were forcing her to do, for, you know, just doing dumb things like going alone in the woods, you know, to go after the medicine or something, I might come back to that later, uh, but uh, yeah, just don't force her into situations which are almost impossible, you know, to get out of just for the sake of doing it and, you know, making it look only more and more unrealistic, you know, I, I, I am all about making, uh, get, forcing people into realistic situations where they can get out of and if they cannot get out of, then I would feel like they should not get out of it, but that's just me, um, and, uh, yeah, uh, 
I guess that's pretty much it. I mean, she's very, uh, you know, straightforward in that sense that I don't see any major issues with her character. I wouldn't want to change her in any way. She is uh, very much on point. Now, let's go into Sammy's character. So, for Sammy, I would say just completely, that's a general thing, that's not just a season 3 thing, but I would probably say just completely as a whole, if I were to redo the whole thing, uh, get rid of the whole corporate spy uh, idiotic trope, it's completely just out of place, it's dumb, it doesn't make sense on any level, it just doesn't work. I would say make her more like a very lovable, caring type of character who is good at cooking because she lives in a ranch, you know, that I would expect her to be particularly great at these things. And just uh, make her this kind of character who basically helps make peace, if you will, you know, that would be a very good way to maybe implement her. She strikes me as that type of character. She, I mean, don't get me wrong, I still sometimes find her incredibly annoying. But I cannot deny the fact that she is also very... She can be incredibly likable at some in some points as well. You know, there are good things about her. I just feel like the writers didn't give her a very good story. But uh, that's pretty much where she is at. Uh, and uh, this could actually... You know, the whole idea of cooking and stuff, like I said. This could pay off if they were to come across, you know, refrigerated food. And they could. there would be an opportunity also to... Uh, have scenes where they would have, you know, some characters interacting and conversing uh, to to basically progress in development a bit more with their own relationship, well, you know, at the dinner table, if you will. Those things are generally very useful from time to time because it shouldn't always be about crazy action, which is sometimes just too convoluted. I think it's a good idea to sometimes have genuinely good scenes where they can just develop the characters. <coughs> So, but that's that's it for Sammy, uh, for me personally. Feel free if you want to add something on her character that you feel was done wrong specifically in this season that you would want to change, or how else would you see her character, maybe, if you have anything. It's the same for Yasmina as well, if you feel like you would want to see something else, then uh, maybe we could see what, what ideas you guys have, so feel free to post them in the comments. So let's move on to the Brooklyn's character. Okay, so... Uh, um, I feel like they are not sure exactly what they're doing with her, honestly, because she strikes me as this... Um, what's the best way to describe her? It's like they were trying to get her to progress and gradually grow up, you know, from the idea of being glued to social media and all of a sudden only to come back to square one again. It's like they are retconning in this season, they, uh, you know, all of her previous uh, development uh, where she was clearly over it and then all of a sudden she's back into it again. It's just kind of dumb to me personally. It felt like for the writing purposes it didn't f just stick with me. And uh, as a whole character overall I would definitely want to maybe uh, point out that the, uh, the identity politics crap that they inserted, I think it was season one, where she said, oh, is that what toxic masculinity looks like? That, that was the dumbest crap they could have ever come up with. Like, why? There was absolutely no reason for it to be there. There were so many other ways to describe that whatever she felt, you know, to convey her feelings about the behavior that she saw from the side of the guys, you know, she could have expressed it so much better uh, and so much easier, so much straightforward without having to use this as an opportunity to insert uh, the buzzwords, basically. And that's what really annoyed me. And uh, once I get annoyed at something like this, it's pretty hard for me to just simply let go. I'm a bit of a bulldog, you know, once you piss me off, I'm just gonna mull you down until I just feel like I'm satisfied, which it's not a very easy thing to do. But yeah, <laughs> so um, this is what I think about her. She needs to, they need to actually get more on point where in the in next season, in season, um, what was it, season four, because they announced season four, where they should really just continue developing her towards growing up more or less as a person and moving away from this 
fake uh, sort of ideas of being valid of this validation on social media and try to shift her more being grounded into things uh, that surround her and her immediate actual reality okay so that's what i have a problem with her characters she also has this thing uh, with going on and it seems like the writers also have this uh, trope with her that she always comes up with some convenient skills in the most convenient situations just so that they basically don't die and that was another problem uh, overall uh, like her motorcycle I think it was riding skills and then all of a sudden it turned out that she is good at providing first aid because something something it kind of just comes out of nowhere as if it's just convenient for the story out of the blue rather than just uh, somehow maybe get her like say for example if uh, they first introduced her they could have talked about something casually when they were introducing characters and let's say have a lunch time or dinner table scene where they could exchange these things a bit more and she could have said oh yeah i've done this course about first aid or i've worked as a um i don't know lifeguard or something like this you know just things like that you know anything like this would have been fine uh, but when it's nowhere to be mentioned and then all of a sudden it just becomes oh yeah by the way i do this so everybody's safe <laughs> that's just too much i don't i don't know i just it just doesn't sit right with me let me know if it felt okay for you and uh, uh, if it didn't feel okay for you then let me know if you agree with me specifically here or did you have something else in mind when you were thinking of that so now let's go to Ben's character. Oh, oh my god. Uh, I will just say right off the bat, uh, Ben's character is the most annoying and my most probably disliked character in terms of writing in this show. And he started off really well. Um, he was doing pretty well when he was overcoming his courage on the train and that scene. All of this stuff was really great. I genuinely thought that they were going to do something good with him. Um, I did not believe that he was dead, of course, when it happened in season 1. It was very convincing, which was not a bad thing, by the way, many people would have probably thought he died. Especially young kids watching this might have thought or suspected, but, I, you know. Anybody who's familiar with the franchise knows that this franchise does not kill the kids, so that's obviously not gonna be something that, you know, is going to really stick very well. But at least it was a good attempt, and the character was doing fine. And then all of a sudden, when he comes back in season two, we have this uh, stupid trope, like this macho Tarzan, whatever. It's just downright annoying. It's unrealistic. It's just cringe to the point where I just, I don't know, I was hurting out of cringe when I was watching every scene with him trying to be the badass, quote unquote. And um, it's more like badass out of his ass kind of character, really. And um, it's, uh, it's basically, I don't know, man, uh, it just doesn't sit right with me. It feels stupid. Everything about that trope is just dumb and it should have been scrapped from get-go. I don't understand why they even approved it. It's basically... Then, of course, you have him having this dilemma when he's facing the choice of doing the right thing versus doing what he feels uh, like he wants, you know. And that felt like a bit of an inappropriate one, to be honest, because... Uh, you know, there's a clear choice. You can either stay here and you're gonna die, obviously, because you're not gonna survive there too long, and uh, uh, other, or else you can get, you know, get out with all the guys. That's really, it's a simple choice. I don't understand why he was even contemplating that. It's stupid. Uh, you know, it's like, uh, it's just dumb. It's almost like he wanted to die, basically. I don't know. It's stupid. And, but um, then he acts like an idiot in cr crucial moments a lot. He then uh, goes on to f look for Bumpy before Scorpius Rex uh, finds, uh, you know, uh, finds her and uh, it's as if he's gonna be the one who can actually do something to make a difference, you know? It's like a, an Ankylosaurus, basically, uh, not yet fully grown, but still quite big already, I presume, and, uh, you know, like, like she, she, on her own, stands a better chance of doing something than Ben does against that stupid hybrid but anyway um we kind of probably think that's how it's gonna happen because uh, you know he has managed to defeat the carnotaurus with a handmade spear 
and came out practically unscathed from it in a way and uh, yeah then of course that's how we find out that his plot armor is basically made of vibranium or something i don't know beats me beats me but uh, the fact that universal thinks that it's a great idea to even just hint on him becoming like an egg uh, an Eric, Kir you know, just this Eric Kirby character on steroids multiplied by 500. Oh my god, that's uh, that's definitely a very bad move, Universal. Extremely bad move. It's not really uh, giving anything that is remotely inspiring. It's very unrealistic. It's an insult to intelligence and uh, just scrap it. Just focus on him overcoming his fears, generally speaking. But don't turn him into this stupid macho Tarzan image that is just cringe and unconvincing and it doesn't suit his character at all. So, yeah. I w as you can tell, I was getting annoyed by his character a lot. Now let's go into uh, Darius's character. Well, Darius was generally, um, I guess, uh, my favorite of the whole thing that Darius and Yasmin, in my opinion, were the ones who truly carried the whole thing on their shoulders. If anything else, I mean, they were the ones that you could have just had them too, to be honest, and it would have been fine, honestly. It felt like every other character just really wasn't needed there, to be honest with you. They could have easily given all the needed traits to these characters and had a lot more depth to them instead and just focus on them too, given the relatively short time for the episodes. You, you could just do that instead, I don't know, like, there's no reason for them to have any other ones there, honestly, there's just no reason at all, you could have just got them too and that's it, but yeah, I like the fact that Darius is smart and he understands some very basic things, you know, as a kid and it's clear that he was this kind of guy who was very, you know, close to his father, you know, he learned a lot from his father and that was really cool, I like that, uh, trope. I'm really, really surprised that the Hollywood does that because, as far as I'm aware, of Hollywood does everything to actually diminish uh, manliness and fatherhood and just downright pretty much shuns on it. But you know, having this basically shown was a very, very good positive sign to me overall about Darius's character. So, and uh, he was very clever in the sense that uh, when he was telling Ben that he should not stay there. You know, it's, he needs to, it's, they gotta go. And we gotta be honest here, you know, if Ben stays there too long, he's gonna start letting, you know, the whole thing get to his head too much and uh, he'll get proud and arrogant and then that's eventually gonna make him screw up and he will die. Well, yeah. So, Darius was right. Darius did nothing wrong, Darius was right about everything. Okay. I could almost see Darius adapting Malcolm, I, you know, quote being like, hate being right all the time. But then, of course, we have uh, the last one of this crew, uh, Kenji's character. Now, this is the one where I would completely just uh, redo his character altogether for the reasons I will explain shortly. So, um, we know that he's of a Japanese descent and... Uh, I would have personally preferred for his character to just overall be more of a traditional Japanese kind of guy so that he can bring some differences to the table where it comes to interacting, you know, say they came together and they would have maybe some struggles, misunderstandings culturally when they try to communicate, uh, you know, uh, a little bit. It would have been nice to have something like this. Maybe he, maybe English would not be his first language, so he would be able to speak English, but we, he would speak with an accent, for example. And uh, it would be really nice to see how they would solve this problem, you know, how they would come together and meet halfway. And I would think that maybe Darius would be a very good uh, character uh, to uh, kind of facilitate that sort of... Um, adaptation you know when they finally find a good common ground to be able to understand each other better you know because uh, so that he doesn't feel left out so that uh, they can all understand what he's all about and uh, he could tell them story about his family background and all of these things there's just so much potential there that they could have explored in that sort of way and brought so much more depth and dynamic with kenji's character instead they just wrote him as uh, basically 
a typical American teenager brat who just happens to be of a Japanese descent, which in my opinion just makes it almost pointless to even make him Japanese specifically. It's uh, it's just like, you know, what does that even really bring to the table at this point, other than just saying that all our characters are diverse? And uh, if you are going to make them diverse, then make them truly diverse in how they actually look at things and how they think, you know, what they actually are about, so that uh, there is actually a good challenge to overcome the differences, because that's also very relatable to a lot of kids at school, for example, when it comes to being thrown together in a classroom where everybody is so different and uh, how there are people who get excluded from the groups and how they adapt and how to maybe show, demonstrate by just showing how you can uh, overcome this difficulty in an extreme situation. So I thought that would have been a very good opportunity for them to do it, but uh, they wasted that opportunity, unfortunately. Let me know what you think, by the way. Do you think, uh, do you like Kenji as a character, like he, the way he is? Or would you have liked it if they did it the way I described it, basically AK version Kenji? Or would you have your own version of Kenji, uh, you know, in, the, in this show? So let me know. Now, I wanted to bring up two other characters that I felt should have been there the whole time. And uh, for some reason, they weren't. Remember Dave and Roxy from the first season? Yeah, the guys, the adults who were made to look after them. Why did they just not leave them there with them? That would have made the whole thing even make more sense that they managed to survive long just because they had adult supervision, you know, and they could hold out long enough. And um, I would say all they had to do was just basically, uh, you know, Keeping them as a part of the group, making themselves useful, obviously, uh, and uh, uh, using their adulthood as a way to teach the kids, you know, certain skills, you know, to kind of facilitate their growth as characters generally, you know, that would have been really good. And then, of course, uh, uh, remove the identity politics there where they were trying to downgrade Dave to just this dumb beta buffoon cuckass idiot. And uh, only to elevate Roxy, looking all stunning and brave in contrast with, I don't know, just, I don't know, ne neither of them really had anything to offer as characters, they were just completely pointless, to be honest. They could have just been eaten, to be fair, and that would have been fine. You know, they were the kind of characters that could have been eaten in the first season, as they were, or they could have actually made them into really interesting characters and kept them on. Uh, all the way to date and that's the latter is my personal preference for them <clears throat> so yeah they could have also had some really good relationship building for example Dave could maybe uh, remind uh, Darius of his uh, older brother maybe of his father a little bit as well that would have been really nice maybe have uh, Dave even die by sacrificing himself at the end somewhere whatever during the previous seasons or at the end of this season maybe and then of course uh, that would be a good push for Roxy's character to take over to kind of take a step up you know and a push up to kind of maybe grow a bit more as well and take on more responsibilities because obviously uh, it's so that Dave's sacrifice is not in vain and thus she takes it on herself to make sure that the kids get back uh, and get out of there safely you know that would have been really good in my opinion Okay, well, those are my thoughts on characters, now let's go into some other things that... Oh yes, character-wise, I personally think that it's a little bit unrealistic to me that for some reason we're not seeing any romantic involvements between any of the characters. And um, I know some people are gonna say that romance is cliché, it's dumb... No, it's not. Uh, it's only cliché and dumb depends on who, wrote, who writes it, okay? so. I do not accept the argument that romance as a trope itself is dumb. It's only... Every trope is... You know, there are some bad tropes, of course, but their romance trope as a whole is very... Of course, it's a very wide term. It's a very broad definition, you know, so you have to be specific what kind of trope you're writing when it comes to romance. But I think uh, Darius and Yasmina, personally, I think they, they should really end up somehow in, interested in each other. And also look at it this way, you have teenagers who are already in their age when they are 
sexually either already sexually mature or very much a delayed stage of their sexual maturity process they uh, are in an island where survival instincts are kicking in do i need to tell you now what it means it also means that not only your basic instincts to security and safety get ramped up but reproductive instincts also kick in you know because that's part of the survival of you know as well because you are in a very uh, dangerous situation where there's only a few of you and uh, you're limited in your choices and you kind of unwittingly already start instinctively find you know certain people of the opposite sex uh, attractive unless some of them are gay which is a unique and different story whatever we don't have any evidence to suggest that any of the characters are gay so i'm just sticking to the default but uh, you get the point though it's uh, kind of one of those things that uh, you do they don't have to talk about it like you know yeah let's have sex for example but uh, more so they should at least show that there is something going on you know like there is an interest going on you know of some kind that girls may be interested in boys boys are interested in girls you know just kind of have something on a very surface basic level that isn't really too sexualized but then of course uh, you know netflix uh, made cuties so that's obviously okay so i don't see why we cannot have a light romance here you know of some kind involved with some of the characters at least not all of them but maybe at least some of them but in any case i am uh, in this case uh, darius and yasmina as a couple i would like that that would be my probably my thing i don't even know who else could end up you know with one another i would probably say maybe genji and brooklyn i don't know not sure but uh, yeah yasmina and darius definitely now let's uh, get into the general pros uh, of the whole thing things that i like unfortunately there are not many but there are some and those are showing herbivores being as aggressive and uh, you know just as much as you know just as dangerous as carnivores really so they're not reserving this trait only for carnivores because herbivores can be pretty ruthless as well when it comes to certain situations and uh, then of course we have uh, scenes with the consignators those ones i particularly enjoyed i thought they were kind of funny and nice comic relief with them um, those were very nice and um, occasional music was part you know like a callback to the original music that was one of the things i really liked there was also an easter egg of uh, uh, no jp novel reference where uh, presumably of how john hammond actually dies well i mean it doesn't say that in the story here because here in this in this story it doesn't happen but in the books it happens uh, so they are referencing it by kind of indirect means if you will uh, by inserting it here which is a very interesting easter egg then i like uh, also how yas and sammy's friendship develops that's really nice i like these kind of things i think that's a good step in the right direction and of course the funniest scenes with dino mooing were kind of cool and you could even go as far as saying cute that was nice to watch and Kylosaurus Herd fighting back against the Scorpius hybrid was very good. I personally really, really liked it. I fully approve of that scene, 100%. I like the idea of showing herbivores also standing up to themselves. That's perfectly, you know, legit. <clears throat> now, I'm going to go down to the point where there are general cons and that's a lot of stuff here. So first, uh, Oranosaurus uh, being over the top persistent with chasing humans felt like they were just way, just forcing it away a bit too much. I felt like they could have just given up at least halfway from what was shown. <laughs> they just felt like it was pretty much had its mindset to basically kill these humans for whatever reason. And uh, I don't know, that, that felt a little bit too much and over the top for me personally. Now, the other thing that also made me kind of scratch my head a little bit and just really dislike this point was the new dinosaur species. 
uh, that have never been on the list, they miraculously keep spawning <laughs> throughout this franchise, while species such as Dilophosaurus and Triceratops were just not shown even once in this show, as far as I recall, or given any proper attention. So, like, no trikes, no Dilos, but for some reason we have uh, Monolophosaurus and Oranosaurus, and then we have a new hybrid, and then we have some other stuff, so I don't know, that just felt a little bit weird to me as well. Then, of course, there was the point where Tail, well, where Ankylosaurus uh, Bumpy basically hits uh, the Oranosaurus in the head. That should have either at least knocked it out immediately, or it would have actually just insta killed that Oranosaurus. Okay? That was kind of unrealistic as well. It feels like sometimes they are shaping these things around just to fit the story rather than actually doing it in a way that would make sense and would be believable. It's like if we say that this happened, it happens like this. If we say it doesn't, it doesn't. It's uh, I don't like that uh, way of writing. It's just stupid. Then, of course, they made a very basic rookie mistake. They said Sinoceratops. Someone said, oh, 68 million years ago. But Sinoceratops actually lived 73.5 million years ago. And that's another testament that Universal does not know how to do a good just basic Google search. They just don't know how to do it. They didn't know how to do it when they were doing this Dominion uh, teaser that got leaked and came out. Uh, you know, that was a bit of a mess as well. Uh, I don't even want to get into this because I have I have no, nothing good to say about that upcoming film so far, to be honest. So, But that's a story for another time. As a, and the other thing as well, I want to wait till it actually comes out. Maybe I'll hate watch it uh, just for the sake of ranting it on the channel for the content, you know. Uh, and uh, maybe we'll talk about it then and until then I'm not going I'm going to reserve my judgment anyway get back on topic now so now the other thing that was really bad was uh, they were throwing a party on an island with a crap ton of dangerous predators and where electric fences were not operational uh, I mean uh, talk about basically more dumbassery behavior and then, of course, screaming in the middle of the forest or and jungle, just in, like it's nothing. Uh, then wasting these petards or explosive things that were could have been saved to just use against predators, you know, to scare them off. They, they did save some, but they could have saved more because they wouldn't know how long they would really be stuck there and how much they would need. And just playing dumb games and, you know, in the life or death situations, just... Uh, then there was this scene where they were having a conversation next to Ben and then they yell at him going private conversation Ben and it's just like no sense at all just downright idiotic I mean if you want privacy ask Ben to go on ahead or just do so yourself step aside and have some privacy why are you basically uh, being next to each other and then talking, you know, in front of him, in his face, and then when he says something, you're like, private conversation, like, what the actual fuck, I'm sorry, but what the actual fuck, any fuck, that's, that, that's just, oh, universal, you're stupid. Then, um, of course, uh, overall, very cringe and uh, dumbed down dialogues to the point where it just doesn't even feel like it's for kindergarten kids, but it, it just feels like the creators are insulting your intelligence with it and uh, they're being somewhat condescending to you as a viewer regardless of your age it's almost like uh, they forgot that Land Before Time uh, Secrets of the Nim and uh, many other really awesome kids uh, cartoons existed you know like uh, those things never existed or Ferngali for example those ones had were really smart and I as a kid watched these and I loved them Part of the reason why I love them was because they were very well written and uh, they touched on some very good topics while at the same time they entertained the hell out of me as well so I don't understand why uh, this basically they just became a bunch of cowards all about political correctness just stupid basically yeah Hollywood in a nutshell anyway back on topic so then we have of course uh, Yaz and Brooklyn discussing first world problems while being stuck on the island again full of dangerous predators that's just dumb as well and uh, it feels like that should be the last thing on their mind you know just talking about some nonsense the random just crap 
Then uh, Yaz, of course, going to after the medicine by herself. She should have gone with somebody else as well. And then, of course, uh, we get to the best part, introducing a new hybrid, which is just so downright annoying and boring. I don't understand why it needed to be there. There was just no reason for it to exist. It's too ugly, it's too unnatural, and... Um, I will tell you one thing, though. If they wanted a venomous hybrid, why did they not just make a good hybrid out of Dilophosaurus and maybe have a flock of Dilos, you know, come to it, rally with it, you know, as a pack? You know, that would have been a great excuse to bring Dilos into the show on a more regular basis and uh, have a Dilo hybrid, but for some reason they thought it's not a good idea, probably. Or maybe because they just don't know, they just don't think. I don't know. Beats me. Let me know what you think. Do you think uh, that a Dilophosaurus hybrid would have been much nicer? Uh, and have Dilosa Dilophosaurus uh, back as well would have been better. Instead of just constantly spawning new species just so that they can pander to the toy companies. Uh, back on topic now. In some scenes, uh, of course, there is also this um, nostalgia pandering. A bit too hard. And uh, that was a bit cringy for me. I just couldn't... Uh, I just felt like... Uh, they were trying to basically throw you a bone and be like, yeah, we know this is totally unrelated uh, and and we are trying to get, you know, unrelated as in like this new franchise, the rebranding that we're doing is totally different, but we're still going to rely on, you know, the originals to draw you in. So we are just going to, uh, you know, have some of these things for you to so you can uh, remember because, you know, you used to like this, right? Now we can get you to buy and swallow up the shitty product that we made. That's basically how it came off to me. And then, of course, you have this stupid thing about uh, Blue fighting two Scorpiuses and them fighting each other. It's like a weird three-way fight of a Kama Sutra that just looked ridiculous. <laughs> so <laughs> it's like, what do you even make of it, you know? But yeah, um, those are my general thoughts. Literally just... Uh, point by point what I could come up with if you have something else that you wanted to bring up in terms of things that you both liked and disliked about this show in this season uh, or the show in general based on the three seasons so far feel free to post them in the comments now this one here is gonna be the end of my review so if you are uh, here just for the review and you don't want to listen to you know my backstory to why I was away from the channel for a long time uh, which is not really much of a complex story really it's a very simple one but if you don't want to listen to that feel free to click away and I thank you for watching and listening this long to my uh, mini podcast on review and uh, if you're new to the channel make sure you hit the like button subscribe and uh, take good care of yourself and stay safe and healthy other than that uh, I will see you in the next video now uh, those of you who have decided to stay, uh, let's uh, get into the next part uh, regarding my uh, hiatus, if you will. Nothing serious has been actually happening to contrary or to what you might have thought. You know, no, you know, everything was fine. Everybody is alive and well. You know, but um, I think this is one of the times when I have to just one more time remind people who have been asking me in private mostly why am i not you know uh, making videos regularly well youtube is not my job okay it's something i just do whenever i feel like it and when i just feel like i have something to put out or say and of course when i have time to give you a bit of a context i am currently working i, I would say that based on you know doing commission work which is just my artwork then i'm working an actual job as well in a restaurant <laughs> in the kitchen which gets pretty damn you know intense and uh, i also uh, started my training in a teaching program to teach english for foreign uh, people you know so uh, there's gonna i'm gonna be working multiple jobs in the future as well and there's gonna be a lot of things going on so you know making videos is gonna be probably on my last priority of the list in general and then of course there is just such basic thing like well life basically so you know you you just gotta try to see if you can do the maths here and understand how much of it is really going to fit in my schedule to do like a video and especially when it comes to things that i 
as of late have become less and less interested in when it comes to just ranting on random stuff, uh, most of which I just even don't even care about anymore. And I prefer to be more authentic about things, you know, I don't feel like I would want to do a video about something that I personally don't really care about and just try to play a role just for the sake of ranting so that people can get a dig out of it. I kind of feel more like I want to do more authentic things where I genuinely express my real thoughts and ideas and uh, views when it comes to it. Of course, there will be videos that, that are going to come later. I have promised a lot of you to do a video tutorial on some more painting, so I'm going to try to do more of those. I might include more hobby-related videos, you know, just for just showing off maybe some of my collections of different things, because I have many different hobbies. It's not just dinosaurs. I like a lot of different things. And uh, uh, I'm also planning to invest into a 3D printer, and uh, later on, sometime during either this year or maybe first thing next year uh, so this will be really cool to try out some resin printing and uh, also of course uh, model kits coming along very slowly right now because uh, I recently moved into a new home as well so that's kind of taken a lot of effort away from doing things that I normally would do and uh, the layout doesn't quite uh, allow me to really do it properly, so I'm renting a garage in order to keep things there. So uh, I will be able to make some, but it's just gonna take me longer time to make. So if that makes sense. Now, of course, uh, there are just other things, you know, going on, just life things that I don't feel like getting into, but, uh, you know, Stuff happens, okay? So, <laughs> that's all I can say. Uh, but, um, yeah, uh, then of course, uh, what else am I doing? I'm learning Japanese as well. I've been very kind of on and off with it, you know, whenever I had time to really sit down and do some lessons. And uh, sometimes I didn't have an opportunity, but most of the times I've been consistent. So, it's been quite helpful and I've learned quite a few things. I've even started making friends you know from japan as well uh, and communicating with them practicing a little bit as well so that was really nice and i'm sure more things coming this way as well that would be great something to look forward to uh, so as long as once they open up hopefully their borders then first thing i would probably want to do is just go there as a tourist and then later on who knows what else and uh, then uh, of course in terms of video content Yes, uh, I am gonna make more content about why I personally, uh, where I stand about, and where many of the other guests who come to the uh, podcast stand in regards to politics in the paleontology. I'm gonna make more videos, maybe elaborating even further into details why I believe this should not have anything to do with it and why it should be kept out of it at all costs. Um, and um, I know it's gonna probably offend a lot of people so but uh, if uh, you know if this does not offend you then make sure you subscribe to the channel and stick around so that uh, I will at least get the chance to offend you later okay but um, yeah this is coming regardless you know I'm also going to make a bit of a note here for people to just be aware of it that I'm not going to be responding to comments as often as I once used to and uh, I will only be responding selectively. I'm not going to block the comments, you can comment whatever you want, but if I personally find that it's not worth my time or for whatever reason that I don't find your argument to be very, you know, well ex well forwarded and explained for, for uh, on any topic, I mean just anything, if I find that it's just basically not really addressing the issue properly and it feels like a waste of time I'm just probably not gonna even bother responding so just so you know that uh, you know just because I don't respond doesn't mean I don't see it but it's just a lot of times I don't feel like responding for various reasons okay because uh, a lot of times it's just a waste of time because it's not going anywhere it's just people venting people just being on, people on the internet a lot of things that they say on the internet they will never say it to your face and I know for a fact that many of them would never say things that they say to me <laughs> in, on the internet. They would never say that to my face ever in their whole life. Okay? It's not gonna happen, <laughs> probably. Uh, 
but of course uh, welcome to try but I'd be very careful anyway um, uh, enough of that uh, so that was pretty much it at this point uh, we, we are caught up so hopefully when I have more time I will do more videos of various things that you know I might have an idea I've got some ideas already for videos I don't have the notes in front of me for it but uh, we will definitely do some more videos I just don't know when I will be able to tend to them properly for again variety of reasons mainly being that I'm gonna be working multiple jobs and uh, living the life to the fullest so YouTube might just be on a very last sort of priority um, you know queue if you will other than that uh, thank you those who decided to stick around to this section thank you very much for listening this long and for being uh, patient and uh, also I uh, want to express uh, my gratitude to those who have already subscribed and who follow my content and of course feel free uh, if you know any other people who are interested in this kind of content make sure you invite them over here as well and uh, let's uh, just basically have a bit of fun with it well whenever we can other than that uh, uh, once again thank you very much and uh, I will speak to you guys later uh, whenever I come out so you will never know when I will but when I will come you will know make sure you hit the notifications in that case by the way that would be very helpful at this point I'm rambling now and uh, a bit tired so I'm gonna have to go and get some rest because I've got a long day to do things as well and later I've got work as well so yes many things that need to be done and taken care of um, but uh, it was nice to come out finally to have a bit of a chat uh, anyways cheers uh, much love and uh, appreciation and you guys take care of yourselves and be good bye bye